last but not least is Darian Shirazi from Radius. And Darian was a early Facebook employee and decided that SMB is way sexier. So take it away. Thank you, Darian. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. Okay. How many of you run startups? Wow, my favorite audience. I'm glad it's not a bunch of VCs. So. Um, but I'd love to talk to you today about paid marketing and how paid marketing can make an unsexy business really sing. Um, I'm going to use a case study, which is Radius, the company I started a few years ago, and show you exactly some of the experiments we ran and how you can implement those experiments in your startup to really make paid marketing a channel to grow fast. So a little bit about me. Um, first off, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Radius. My other co-founder is somewhere in here in the back. Raising his hand, cool. And uh, what we do is we provide software that helps sales and marketing teams target small businesses. We help you generate leads. We help you understand your customers. So if you sell to small businesses or market to small businesses, you should go to radius.com and sign up. Um, I was obviously early at Facebook. I worked at eBay. I'm an investor in a bunch of 500 startups companies like Homejoy, MessageMe, Fresh, and Udemy. All these companies have done a lot of things like paid marketing that I'm going to talk about. And what we're really seeing is that paid marketing is the wave of the future. So the theme of this talk is really that paid acquisition is a necessary evil for all SaaS companies. Anything in enterprise software, you have to do paid acquisition. If you're Marketo, for example, you basically operate at a loss. But the only thing investors and employees and people care about in enterprise software is growth. And so how do we maximize growth? And a lot of enterprise software companies that I see come and pitch to me or that I analyze on the web or even us in the early days, they have graphs that look like this. And this graph is horrible. It's basically showing that you have a no growth business. The orange line is the total MRR that your business is bringing in each month. And the blue line is the number of organic leads that you're bringing in, either through content marketing or through PR or basically a non-paid channel. Now the challenge is depending on how good your product is, obviously this graph can go for a lot longer. But there's always going to be churn in an enterprise software product. I haven't heard of an enterprise software product that doesn't experience some level of churn. So when you think about this, if you don't do any paid marketing, or if you don't do any sort of actually, actual user acquisition, you're going to end up with a business that doesn't really grow, because you're going to have flat MRR over time. Very rarely are there businesses that continue to grow or grow quickly. One is obviously Dropbox. GitHub is obviously a fantastic product. But most software as a service products need to do paid marketing. So two definitions here before we start. First is CAC, which is cost of acquiring a customer. I'm sure a lot of you know this. I just want to clear it up. And LTV, which is lifetime value of a customer. These are some of the acronyms I'm going to be using throughout the talk just to talk about how you can maximize your customer acquisition. So CAC and LTV are key performance metrics, I think, for any unsexy business. And the first thing is that CAC evaluates how good your marketing organization is. Are you efficient at acquiring users? Can you pay the least amount for acquiring a user? Is your marketing team optimizing landing pages? Are they optimizing your ad copy? Those are really some of the good questions. And LTV evaluates your product organization, which is probably one of the most important metrics. Is, is your product any good? Do people churn after three months? Do they churn after one month? Do they never churn? Uh, and that also shows you the ROI of your CAC. Obviously, if your LTV is higher, you know, your CAC can be higher, and you can acquire more customers more aggressively. So here's the case study, which is uh, Radius. So some of the things that we did this summer, because we only started doing paid marketing about two months ago. And the hypothesis is that you know, we think our product is awesome. We actually think it's way better than our competitors. But you know, we want to know which marketing channels are going to bring us a lot of customers. We can do PR. I can write as many Forbes columns until I'm blue in the face. I can write a guest post on TechCrunch and get free leads. But how can I make sure that we have a scalable, efficient way of acquiring customers and get many of them on a day-by-day -day basis? And so the first thing that we did is we looked at competitors or software companies in the space. So some of our top competitors are Sales Genie, which provides sales tools and leads. Dun & Bradstreet, which has been around since 1850, InfoFree, and, and we put up New Relic, which is sort of a new age SaaS company. And we used a so some software called SpyFu. There are a lot of companies that evaluate sort of cost of acquisition and AdWords. And we said, how much are these companies spending per day? What, what is their conversion rate? And estimating some of those things and figuring out what their CAC is. And we found the CAC is really high in our industry, which is fine, 
if your product actually costs a lot of money. I and mean, our average you know, customer comes in and pays $250 a month. So in terms of Sales Genie, they're spending $1,000 to buy a customer, which is kind of a lot of money. So then what we did is we ran, run a bunch of experiments and we said, okay, we're gonna try to get our CAC in line with where everyone else who's a competitor is. And we ran some crazy ads, like one where on Facebook, which is, you are a boss, which has some dude with a cell phone. We actually had one which was like just some hot girl or whatever, which didn't really convert at all, but that was an idea our marketing guy had. Um, we even had, oh my God, sweet B2B marketing list, unlimited B2B list. We also had one that said, kill your quota in the first day, and that didn't really convert well either. But these are the ones that actually converted quite well, and we also went through about five iterations of uh, landing pages until we were satisfied with the conversion. Um, we had one that said, bursting with small business leads, explosive small business leads. We even took like different photos of different people and you know, tried different icons, lots of different things. And we had to do many, many iterations. And then what we did is we filled out numbers on, by channel. And this is something that you should do if you're doing the same analysis. We looked at how much are we spending per day on AdWords, on Bing, on Facebook, on Twitter, and organic, and compared all these CACs together to see which, where we ended up. And we found that our most expensive one, I'm obviously not gonna share these numbers because they're confidential, but um, the, the, best, the most expensive was Google, but had the best conversion. Our customers that we found through Google were most, of, most likely to sign up for, for the product. People who came through Facebook were really cheap, but most of the time they just didn't really have money to spend. Um, and then Bing was a really good alternative to AdWords, but we didn't have as much volume as we did on Google. And Twitter was just fantastic for us. So, sorry, one more thing. So once you fill out all these numbers, you can sort of get a good sense of where you need to optimize. If you, you know, for example, don't have a very good close rate, that, then you know your sales organization isn't that good, or the leads are bad. If you, you know, have really bad click to lead, or if you, then you know your ad copy is bad. If you know that you have really bad lead to conversion, you know your landing page is bad. And you can sort of take this spreadsheet and break down each specific category to determine where your marketing organization is most effective. So why do you need to try all the sources out there? We thought about, hey, let's just, let's just do Google Ads, AdWords. Let's forget about all the other sources. And then we started, started looking at that and saying, no, we really need to do a blended approach because there are other channels that are cheaper. There's channels like StumbleUpon where we actually acquire users from. And who knew that would be a good channel? And we also acquire users from Twitter. We acquire users from Twitter ad networks. And you know, if you blend all these together, you can actually reduce your CAC by a lot. The problem is, is that if you do one, unless it's Google, you won't have enough volume to convert customers fast enough to outpace your churn. So if your LTV exceeds your CAC by at least 30%, you have a great business. And oftentimes, businesses like Marketo, businesses that are, in, that are very unsexy, have really, really good percentage of LTV over CAC. And this is something that everybody looks for, whether you're hiring, whether you're raising money, or any of those things, you wanna be absolutely positive that your LTV is outpacing your CAC. Because that, you know you can continue to buy users all day long. And we all wanna be in a situation where we can buy users all day long. So if you do this right, this is what the graph should look like. And this graph is actually quite fantastic. You'll see that organic and paid traffic sort of scales up nicely in a hockey stick format, and your total MRR scales up as well. Now, your organic and paid should outpace your total MR at some point if you really get the numbers down because your sales team is gonna lag behind where the leads are. And that means you can continue to grow. So if you look at a company like Marketo, the organic and paid graph is very, very much so outpaced the MRR graph. But that's okay because they're continuing to invest in growth in the business. So I urge you to all take that spreadsheet and plot your graph exactly like this, which is really nice. And you can see if you have a business that's like this, that you have a business that's growing, you have a SaaS product that actually has LTV outpaced CAC. So what tools do you need to use in order to do this right? The first is you know, marketing lifecycle management. We use Acton. I think HubSpot's a great solution. I think they all are good. It's really just, you wanna keep track of your leads, you wanna make sure the leads that you're acquiring, you're nurturing, because you never know how long it's gonna take a person to convert from an actual lead into an opportunity. We have leads that have been sitting in nurturing campaigns for four months and then they eventually convert to a, real, to a paid user. The second is you wanna have your landing page optimization tools really, really well ironed out. 
I think Optimizely is definitely the best one and the ringleader. We've seen huge amounts of value and lift out of Optimizely. Uh, do a lot of analytics. We use segment.io so we can try all the different tools that are out there. Um, we do remarketing campaigns, so users that we acquire in, we remarket to, so they see our ads on Facebook and elsewhere. So that's Google remarketing and perfect, perfect audience. If you do all these things well, you can over a six to eight month period really start to understand which paid marketing channels you need to optimize and which ones are really working well. So I've optimized to like crazy, but my CAC is still higher than my LTV. I can't seem to get paid marketing channels to work. Well, there's a few things that really lead to this. One is that your ads are bad, they're targeting to the wrong verticals, and we had this problem. We were targeting to people that were looking for consumer lists, not B2B lists, so we changed a lot of our ad copy. Your product isn't at MVP, you aren't really ready to start doing paid acquisition. You'll find this out very quickly through paid channels. And paid channels can actually help you find out whether your product is good enough faster than just organic channels. A uh, sales issue, your sales team isn't good. They don't know how to talk on the phone about your product. They don't know how to actually close deals. And um, you know, if your CAC is greater than your LTV and it's less than three month cost of your service, you might have, have an account management issue, so you might not be nurturing the people that actually start paying. You aren't giving them the love that they need in order to keep them. So there are many different reasons as to why that, that paid marketing channels might not work out. But the key point is to use that spreadsheet that I showed you to identify where the process breaks down. And that's uh, paid marketing in a nutshell. Awesome. Any questions, uh, you can also yeah, follow me on yeah. Twitter, et cetera. We have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, any questions? Yep. Um, I think that it's really important to start doing it early. I wish we had done it earlier. Um, and the reason it's so cheap, it's pretty cheap to like start testing things. Like for a few hundred dollars, you can probably get an indication, depending on the size of your product, whether you're going to get people to land on your landing pages. And if you use Bing as like a instead of Google, your you know CPC is going to be really low, or Ask.com is going to be even lower. There might be less high quality users, but this will get you in the mode of starting to test these things. So I think that the earlier you start, the better. But you know, because you're going to have to do this if you're in a SaaS business to grow fast. So. Yep. One, one more. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. She, I, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. The blank. You, <laughs> that this guy. Yeah, yeah. The organic. Uh -huh. What? You know. How did you define the numbers in there? Meaning, did you include PR you were paying for? Did you include the salaries of marketing guys on your team? I mean, you know, how do you? fit numbers into that. Yeah, we did. I mean, we took um, how much are we spending on people that are writing blog content, because we get a lot of leads through that. Um, we also looked at what are the costs of PR if we did have a PR firm. Um, maybe, you know, you can quantify it somewhat, but the key point is that CAC is not as important on, on organic, but it's a good way to benchmark your conversion for other things. Most likely your funnel on organic is going to look massive at the top and like very few conversions, because it's a lot of people that are passers-by. But at least you'll be able to know, hey, how much better is paid working than organic? Do it one more? Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Sure, yeah. That's a really good question. So the question is, um, freemium versus gated, and how paid marketing affects those two. Is that sort of the question? So um, we're actually switching from gated to paid to um, uh, self-provisioning next week, and the real reason for that is because we've figured out all these metrics. We made a conscious decision to start with gated and do all these analyses so that we could figure out how we could get really good at putting people through the pipeline and getting our sales team trained up so that they were the ones that had to close. And once we got that dialed in, then we're going to switch to premium, freemium. And that's just a choice that we've made. Um, I think that sort of decision you have to make. Now, one thing that's really nice about self-provisioned accounts is that your CAC probably goes through, really drops, because you, don't, you actually get people in the product. But then the second question ends up being um, you have to test all the conversion loops inside the product to get people to pay. And they're probably less receptive to talking to someone on the phone if they didn't like the product. 
So it's really important to try to make sure that you've dialed everything in. That's why I'm a big fan of gated, figure out your metrics and then switch. And you know, we got to significant revenue by doing that without actually having self-provisioning. And now we're ready to do that, so we're making that switch next week. So, cool. yeah. We're out of time. That's it? All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>